of purely syntactic convenience that allows me to avoid saying these types when the compiler already knows what the type of the right-hand side is. Hmm. So I still get full type safety. It's not like a variant where I can stash an int in it and then later a string. This thing is just a shared pointer string. I know it's a shared pointer string because of the initializer here, so I don't need to repeat so it. So is C-sharp, you know, just, just to go on a quick sure. side tangent, is the C-sharp var really a variant? Uh, no. Okay. okay. Just use I, I don't know C sharp. Um, that's fine. No, that's yeah. understandable. I just yeah. wanted to make sure. It doesn't it's not do like auto JavaScript. deduction. Yeah. Okay. So you Fair can think enough. of it like right that. Right on. So you got yeah. that auto in, in C sharp. Yeah. yeah. So you got auto there, and then you got make shared. And what this is doing is because it can both construct the object and the shared pointer to it simultaneously, what it does is you've got your SP, and it's still got the same representation. It has to because. Some shared pointers can be constructed using the new way. Some shared pointers can be constructed using the old way. And they definitely better have the same representation. Otherwise, you'll get crashes when you try to uh, use them together. Um, and what will happen is here, this will be the pointer to the object. And here's your string. But it lives within a single allocation that also contains the strong ref count and the weak ref count. And then this pointer, which points to the control block, also points here. Technically, this points all the way inside to the string, but it's the same type of space. And so what happens is we perform a single dynamic memory allocation where we then fill in the string and the strong and the weak ref counts instead of two. And then later, when the time comes to destroy it, we only have to free it once. So half the number of dynamic memory uh, operations, great. which is great, um, because those can be a performance concern. And we're also saving space. Look at all the sa space we're saving. Here, remember that allocations also have overhead, maybe 8 or 16 bytes that you don't even see because they're within the heap manager, um, Windows heap alloc in our case. Um, so here you're paying a little overhead, and here you're paying a little overhead. Mm -hmm. With make shared, you're only paying it once. So you're saving space. That's great. That's less pressure on your cache or whatever. Um, we're also avoiding storing this extra pointer. Here, um, I don't want to go into the implementation too deeply, but uh, the reference count control block needs to have a pointer to the standard string so it knows where to delete it. Um, the alternative would be a pointer back to the shared pointer object, which it could then follow to the standard string, but it just takes a shortcut. Here, when the reference count control block is destroyed, it knows where the standard string is because it lives within the control block. So it doesn't need that extra pointer. So you say 4 bytes or 8 bytes on x64. So you're saving tons of space. Um, and it is just as efficient to use because, as always, when you dereference the shared pointer, all we do is hop through a single pointer and access our string. There's no double indirections or lookups or anything like that. That's great. So it's always more efficient uh, with the caveat that if you have a weak pointer, um, it can keep this memory block alive a little longer than you would expect here. But for the vast majority of cases, make shared is going to be a nice performance win. Great. And it's also more robust. It avoids a certain leak um, where if you have unnamed shared pointers, you can accidentally leak things when exceptions are thrown. Make shared prevents that because at no point does it ever say new. The new is contained within this function call. Here, because the new, you write it out by hand, it can accidentally leak if you get some other functions being evaluated. Mm -hmm. So, and make shared, uh, we started talking about this because of our value references. Yeah. This is powered by perfect forwarding. Imagine what this has to do. It, it looks like make shared, and it's templated on some type T, which you have to give it, and then it takes args. And here, you can actually give it more than one argument, you know, up to 10. Um, and what it does is it needs to forward these to T's constructor. It needs to call new T args. And then it also needs to new up a ref count control block of some type I won't mention. And then concoct a shared pointer and then return that um, to the user. This is perfect forwarding because we're accepting arbitrary arguments. We don't know what T's constructor is going to take. Then we're actually going to pass it to some inner function, in this case T's constructor. And we don't want to trample on those arguments at all. We want to preserve constness and all those other things and not care about what T is actually taking. 
And so make shared signature is powered by our value references, and that's why it's in VC10. So, so you standard. kind of see that from the very first example, it all looks a bit trivial and contrived, but uh -huh. by the time you get down to here, yeah. Yeah. and you write a single line of code, and then you realize the machinery going on behind that to create this shared pointer and get the types right. Um, mm -hmm. And to the user, Nothing can be simpler than that line there. Yeah, they Absolutely. had to do less typing in the end, less repeating of the type name. They just say auto to declare the shared pointer. So, Stefan, I, I have to ask the question that probably Charles was going to get to, and that's when yeah. you said you can do this up yeah. to 10 arguments. Yes. And of course, okay. that's a horrible thing to have to say. Are we yes. going to solve that problem? Yeah, well, the 10 is, <laughs> 10 is not quite infinity. Yeah. Um, it's, it's actually very different from infinity. Although, as far as programmers are concerned, when you're writing source code, 10 arguments is a lot of arguments. I agree. Now, Unless the, you're writing Office. <laughs> yeah, or, or something that's automatically generated. Yes. Yeah. Um, and actually, C++ OX has a way to solve this problem. So in, I'll erase some of this. Okay. But we should say this is not a C, uh, this is not a C plus plus OX feature that we got to do. So. Yes, unfortunately, it, it has a sad ending. Well, a sad, kind of, ending. A sad oh. happy ending. Yeah. So happy, in, sad. in C, right. you're familiar with variadic. I'll write it out because it's a weird word. Arguments. Oh, varargs. Yeah, varargs. Okay. And this powers things like printf. Or you've got you know some format string you know you percent s or percent d back in and then you know five or something. So this is completely not variadic arguments. Um, how variadic arguments work is they essentially involve a pointer to a bunch of stack space, and then they say I want to read the first four bytes of the stack space, and this is totally going to be an int. It had really better be an int because I'm going to read it. And then I'm just going to treat it as an int. So this is responsible for the pretty well-known um, jagged middle edges of printf, where if the varia uh, variable number of arguments that you pass it don't match the format string, like you say percent %d to print out a decimal integer, but instead you give it a string, this will crash or do other horrible things. Or vice versa, if you tell it you're going to give it a string and instead give it an integer, it's going to crash uh, or do horrible things. That's because there's no type safety whatsoever. The variadic arguments are simply saying, here's a pointer to the stack and start picking off uh, arguments according to the format string. Now, if everything matches, you're good. Everything's well defined. But really, it's not type safe and it's not extensible. You can never give um, some user defined type to printf and uh, expect uh, it to work. Um, in fact, if it is not a uh, if you have a type that's not plain old data, if it has a copy constructor or a destructor, mm -hmm. then you can just never pass it to any variadic argument function because it's not invoking copy constructors. It's just copying bits around. So vari argu variadic arguments are old school. They are not compatible with C++. That's why IO streams uses you know C out, you know some string like this. This allows you to chain together a variable number of arguments, five or int or whatever, um, by having chained calls to operator left shift. This is completely type safe. Um, the, one of the disadvantages it has, though, is it doesn't look like a function call. We would love to be able to say, you know, print uh, meow, comma, blah, comma, five, um, but there's no way to do that in C++ 98 mm -hmm. um, while preserving type safety and extensibility. And so C++ OX looks at that and then things like make shared and says, well, I'm going to have a feature called variadic templates. And this solves the problem of I want to write a template, template, and how many arguments is it going to have? In C++ 98, you need to have a fixed number of arguments. Now you can put like 10 arguments there, but it has to be a finite number. Your source file has to end eventually. And then the template can never accept any more arguments. And if you're writing a template function, you can only accept so many arguments with type safety. Variac templates remove this restriction with a new syntax that looks like args dot 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 
It reuses the ellipsis um, syntax, mm. but for a completely